This is the broadband edition with me, Dikvijay Singh Deo, and I'm delighted to be joined from Italy by Alpha Tauri driver Pierre Gasly. Pierre, many, many thanks uh, for your time because, you know, I must confess, we've interviewed a lot of people on this series, but this is the first time we've got a current Formula One driver joining us. Uh, I must start by asking you, does it feel quite strange to be preparing for a season opener in July? Yeah, I, I'm good. I must say it, it feels quite strange. I think we we had to go through um, a very unusual uh, time for, for all of us, you know, like not only Formula One, but I think the, the entire uh, society. And um, yeah, I must say it was weird. Uh, usually we, we got ready to start the season in middle middle of March in Australia. And then after that, it just kept uh, being delayed and delayed. And, and finally, uh, for the pleasure of everybody, I think we are, we are finally starting this weekend in Spielberg. So no, I think i um, yeah, really happy with the, with the start of the season. I think the, the Formula One organization managed to, uh, to do a fantastic job to uh, give us the opportunity to um, finally uh, go racing. Yes, and is the competitor in you rather relieved that you are having a season after all, because just go back a few months and even this truncated season at a certain point didn't seem possible. I must say, I, I always believed uh, we will start the season at some point. Um, but the main thing was the, the starting point. I didn't know if it was going to be in June, in July, in September or, or, or even later. And um, no, I think, you know, we started the first races without any spectators with very um, strict uh, restrictions on our traveling, um, on our um, in between the races, we we got to stay at the hotel. We can't uh, we can't travel. We can't meet other people. We are limited in certain groups, um, even inside our our own team. So um, very strict due to the um, to to the situation and what's happening. Um, but no, I think we are pretty lucky. I think many other sports are still struggling to launch launch this season or to finish it um in our case i think we should be pretty much um we should be able to uh, to do a, a complete season hopefully with 15 or 18 races but the thing is pierre you spoke about this bio bubble being created lots of safety measures have been put in place but what what we are seeing pierre is that you know with this virus there's not one person who can step back and say i will not get it so everyone, be it the drivers, be it the mechanics, the stewards, everyone at that race course is at risk. Uh, we, that risk happened, we saw uh, what happened in Melbourne, and that risk exists even today. Do you think that ultimately going back out for your fans and racing is still a risk all of y'all are taking? Um, yeah, of course, I, I believe the, the, the risk zero doesn't exist. Um, and um, And I think we just need to do everything we can to make it as safe as possible for all of us. And uh, we are all responsible, you know, as you said, it's not only the drivers, it's the mechanics, it's people working in hospitalities, uh, people working at the track, the marshals, everyone. So, uh, no, I think it's our responsibility to, to be really strict with ourselves, uh, to keep it as safe as possible for everyone. And, uh, yeah, I know F1 organization, I've just passed my, my COVID test uh, two days ago, for example, I have another one before to get in the to get in the paddock. I will have another one uh, the following day. So there will be a, a really um, close, um, uh, how to say that, um, a, a really close like following on on, on our status. Um, and then, as I said, I'm going to be only in contact with few people: my race engineer, my second engineer, my main mechanic. But even within the team, I won't be able to see all of them. So. Yeah, we, we'll try to, to keep it as safe as possible, but uh, I hope everything is going to be fine. Um, but the risk zero doesn't exist, unfortunately. Yes, I agree. And ultimately, it's all going to boil down to two things Formula One teams and drivers and everyone associated with the sport are very well known for. One is self-discipline and the other is trust. Because ultimately, as you said, that each team needs a lot of people around for it to function and nobody... You know, can step out of that bio bubble. One person steps out of the bubble, the entire team is at risk, and, and that's something you're confident that Formula One will get right. That there is that trust within your team, that uh, the Alpha Tori team, that we will go out there and, and face this together as a team. Uh, you know, we we have to, we have to. As I said, we we all need to be responsible. Um, they have been really clear and and strict in terms of regulation and what we are allowed to do what we are not allowed to do. 
uh, to make it happen because otherwise we just got to wait and wait that the situation gets better um, before to restart the season and, and I don't think anyone wants it. So the only way to start now is just to be really strict um, with, with all these restrictions, safety restrictions. Um, and no, I think everybody is aware, you know, it's a, it's a serious problem um, that is happening worldwide as well. And, uh, and I think every, everybody is, uh, is responsible. And as I say, I, I hope we, I hope everything's going to go well. Uh, but I think the main thing we can do is just focus on ourselves and make sure that we do our job properly and, and just uh, trust the people around us are, are going to do the same here. You know, if I could just probe a bit more, one of the other things that we're going to see is a lot of very different Formula 1 to what we've known. I mean, the paddock is going to be almost empty, no outsiders involved. Even uh, post-race, there's, there's going to be no podium sort of ceremony. It's going to happen on the track. And that's something which will take some getting used to, but that's the new normal, isn't it? I, I still didn't see it, so as, as it's going to be the first race. But um, yeah, I believe it's going to... It's going to feel different, you know, that all the spectators you get on the track. We get usually between 200,000 and, and 300,000 people um, every race weekend. And uh, it brings such an atmosphere, like such a, an energy uh, coming to the track, doing the parade before the race. Um, it, it, it really gives goosebumps, you know. So I think this is going to be uh, missing um, a lot. Um, and hopefully we're going to be able to see the, the fans back on track pretty soon. But... At the moment, I don't think anyone's got the answer um, when this is going to be possible. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we, we just got to start like this and, and try to do the best we can with, uh, with the current uh, conditions. You know, I was actually scrolling through your Twitter feed to see what you've been up to. And uh, what really caught my attention was when you actually got into a car and, and, uh, and drove it in, uh, in Imola. What was that feeling like to rev that engine up and finally get that feel of that car going once again through your through your wings? Oh uh, yeah, it was the best feeling I had since a while, you know. So um, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was great. In the end, the last time I was in the car before that was uh, in Barcelona, end of February. Um, so yeah, I had a, a four months break without any driving. Of course, I trained myself in the simulator. I did a bit of karting as well, but. It's, it's different than Formula 1, you know, Formula 1 is really unique, so, um, no, I must say this was amazing, um, we had a couple of laps in Imola, which is also a fantastic track, um, especially with a, a Formula 1 car, and uh, yeah, everything went smoothly, um, going out of the pit lane, you can clearly feel the, the, the 1000 horsepower, or even, even more, so it's not something you get every day. Um, and uh, no, the, the feeling came back very quickly and um, yeah, I'm just uh, really excited for, for this weekend and the coming races. I can see that delight on your face but you also used this lockdown to pretty good effect because when this lockdown actually happened you uh, sort of uh, got stationed in Dubai and you used it for your personal uh, growth as well you know your trainer was there you spent two months there you know going through your mm -hmm. fitness and building up your fitness how do you think that's going to help you once this season begins? Well, we, we really try to focus on the on the physical side because um, rather than just uh, treating this time as a, as a proper lockdown without really doing anything, we, we saw it as an opportunity to actually um, work on myself and try to improve myself uh, physically as an athlete. So I was already ready um, before Melbourne. I felt like physically in great shape, but we just saw this as a, yeah, a great op opportunity with that much time in front of us to just um, work on every area we, we could. And uh, now I can feel it. I'm probably in the, the, yeah, clearly in the best shape of, uh, of my life so far. I'm feeling great and, and ready for the coming season. Um, plus, it's going to be very intense. I don't, we, we never had that many races in such a short time. So we could see that coming. And, and that's why I wanted to, to really make sure I'm, uh, I'm on top of that and uh, physically ready to, uh, to face this uh, uh, yeah, challenging season that we, we're going to have. You know, Pierre, it's been seven months, but in terms of actual racing, it's just been, what, one race or two races since you uh, achieved your career best performance at, uh, at the Brazilian Grand Prix. It's the dream of every driver in motorsport to get on the podium. But now for you, sort of carrying that momentum into this new season and you want to build on that. The quest is to go on there and get on the top spot on the podium and challenge for the championships. Oh, obviously, you know, that's the, the end target for myself. I mean, Formula One is to, to fight for championships and, and victories. And, and that's what I want. Um, 
I must say I'm in a stage of my career where with Alfatari, um, which is a midfield team where we are fighting for points, but obviously the kind of performance we had in Brazil was incredible uh, with that second place. But it's not something, unfortunately, we can fight for every weekend uh, due to the performance and the differences between the cars. So obviously, we, we, want, we want these kind of uh, races every weekend and, and we try our best all the time. Um, but I think for us, yeah, mainly would be to, to keep that momentum. We're very strong all the last um, few races of the year. Um, and hopefully this year, the car is going to be as competitive um, and we're going to be able to, to fight for points again. So I think it's still a bit early to have any expectations uh, because we had only the, the test in Barcelona. Uh, but I, I really hope the, the car is competitive enough to uh, reproduce this, uh, this kind of performance. I'll stay within the realms of Formula 1, but just expand this conversation because while this coronavirus pandemic swept the world, the last few days, we've, few months, uh, weeks, we've seen another uh, movement sweep the world, which is the Black Lives Movement. Uh, Formula 1 has come out and said that it is going to do its bit to sort of encourage diversity. As drivers, do you think that they've finally come out there and taken the right step? I think they are taking the right step, and uh, you know I think it's it's a great a great thing uh, they are doing, and and they are also involving the sports in going into that direction. Um, obviously, all the things doesn't happen in one day, and and we need to give time to them to to really work on it and 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 make a pass um, equal for everybody. Uh, but I think it's um, yeah, it's good they they took these actions and they have a, a plan. Um, in place for the future, yeah. You know, Lewis Hamilton, in fact, has been uh, someone who's been very outspoken on this and he's, in fact, taken the lead. Uh, how important is it, in your opinion, to have leaders in sport go out and address issues? Because what that does is it gets a lot of more people talking about those pressing issues. I think Lewis is a, is a real leader um, in many different aspects. Uh, but obviously, in our sport, in Formula 1, is the main one. And he's also talking... Probably, but something he, he, you know, he lives and and growing up, I think he faced um, these kind of um, of challenges. And I don't want to speak for him, but I think he should be uh, he should be the one saying it. But he is talking about personal uh, challenges he faced, and um, no, I think it, it's it's great that he's standing for um, these values. Um, and uh, yeah, we we need guys like him in our sport, especially with such an exposure and. Uh, globally and, and worldwide uh, uh, known, um, I think his voice for sure is, um, is really powerful and, uh, and that's great. You know, Lando Norris has said uh, also that, you know, drivers are discussing that together they should take a knee and why this could be massive for the message you all are sending out is Formula One is a multicultural sport. Look at all the countries you go out to. Look at all the countries from Australia to China to you know, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, right down to Brazil, almost all corners of the world is, is where your sport goes around the world. So this will be a massive statement if everyone agrees to take a knee together. Uh, yeah, that's, I, at the moment, I think we are, we are thinking about um, a gesture um, everybody um, will do together. So I, it's still in discussion, but I think it's mainly to, to share our values and, and share our support um, with this cause, you know, that uh, the sport in general and all drivers um, are responsible also to share this, mes this message all together. Um, so I think now we, we are having talks um, and, and yeah, the plan is clearly to, um, to do something all together um, just to support, um, to support this cause that is, uh, is really important. Yeah. You know, just talking about the season uh, coming up, uh, Mercedes obviously going in as favourites, but let's not forget... It's starting on home turf for, uh, for Red Bull and, and for you as well. Do you think that with the shortened season, Mercedes' dominance will come under threat now? Yeah, you know, I, I never like to, to talk before we actually, uh, we actually race. And um, I think Mercedes has been like so strong and really impressive over the last few years. And even though this happened and, and these periods um, may change slightly the, the order, um, I still think they're going to be on top, and um, and and I think Lewis is uh, is probably going to go for a, a seventh world championship, or, or sure he's going to have a, a good chance at it. So um, no, I think it should be an interesting season, very intense. Um, there will be short time for 
the teams and and for the the drivers as well to recover and to prepare for um yeah all the races so i think it's going to be very interesting um after to already say who is going to lead, who is going to win. I think we need a couple of races to uh, have a better, a better look at the overall uh, competitiveness of everyone. Obviously, and it's uh, you, as you rightly pointed out, it's it's difficult to predict, especially when we waited so long. But the interesting point here is that we've got the start of the season. We don't know what's going to come in the second part. There's still a lot of unpredictability. And you think that that's going to be beautiful for the sport to attract more viewers, to attract more fans, because there's going to be so much drama that is going to unfold over the next six months once we have racing almost every other week. Uh, you know, the, the, if we manage to restart, especially in Formula One and not all the sports, people are, are looking for entertainment at the moment. You know, we, even myself, I must say, I missed, I'm a big fan of football, I love basketball, I, I love competition in general, and uh, I've been missing this adrenaline, uh, even in front of my TV and just watching something live. So I think if we manage to bring this um, to the people, for sure, there will be a, a lot of attention. Um, and hopefully we're going to be able to put a, a good show. So there are still, as you said, a lot of unknown. Um, the situation is still evolving in some places. It's getting better. Some others is getting worse. So I think we should still um, keep a, a close a close. Um, eye on, on the overall situation. At the moment, we have eight races confirmed. Um, I really hope we can put even more races and, and add maybe up to 15 or 18 races before the end of the year. Uh, I think that will be amazing. And uh, yeah, as I say, if we can um, put a good show for the people, um, I think everybody will be happy. And adding to the unpredictability, Pierre, is the fact that when this uh, lockdown sort of happened, you had the decision of Sebastian Vettel to move on from Ferrari. That sort of kicked off a merry-go-round in the sport as well. There's now talk that Fernando Alonso could come back for next season. This is uh, a lot of drivers right now will also be racing for their futures as well. So that promises more excitement. I think it's going to be a great season. As you said, a lot of changes for 2021. A um, couple of empty seats and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, you know, great names. Fernando is a, a legendary driver. Um, Seb as well, you know, I, would, I don't think anyone knows what he's going to do. So there, there are still a lot of things um, to, to plan for next year. But I think before that, we, we should focus on the coming races and this will be the most important for everybody. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's an ex exciting time for, for, for Formula One right now. Yeah. And what makes it exciting is the rise of younger drivers like you, you know, Carlos Stenz, who was with you at the Red Bull uh, uh, junior program, he's moving on to Ferrari. You had Charles Leclerc already there. Your former teammate Max Verstappen as well. Daniel Ricciardo. All these youngsters are there. Uh, Hamilton and uh, Sebastian Vettel, sort of the senior statesmen in the sport. But over the years, last two years, we've seen that gap closing. Do you think Formula One is ready now for a generational shift that the young girls can't be kept behind anymore? Um, yeah, I think slowly we are seeing more and more young drivers um, coming on the grid and, and also taking these big seats. So, um, yeah, they there might be a change, you know, like Seb is four-time world champion, Lewis six-time uh, world champion. So it's not like you move these kind of drivers uh, really easily and, and uh, you know, they, they should have a career as long as, as Kimi, for example. And uh, I think we obviously are, we are all pushing and we're seeing more new faces on the grid, um, which is great. And yeah, in my case, most of the young guys on the grid, I've raced with them in karting as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to... Uh, find them now in, in Formula 1 and, uh, and to race all together. Okay, uh, you've raced in fact with Max Verstappen as well and he's sort of got what, uh, at least five years now in the sport. That is that what is, you think that, you know, a lot of people talk of him as this next uh, one-time uh, future world champion. You think that now that he's got the experience, that is the most useful thing. He sort of knows the rough and tough world of Formula 1 and this is time for us to see the emergence of him. Well, I believe this is a sport where experience makes a, a pretty big difference. You know, we, we can't really test um, much. We can't really practice much, except uh, um, I, we, we just have the races, basically. So, uh, no, I think now with a bit more experience, for sure, he's going to have a good chance to, to fight for the World Championship. Um, and, yeah, he's got every, everything for it. So, um, he's fast. He's got the, the car as well. Uh, he's got the team behind him and, and everything in it. So, uh, no, I think he should, uh, he should get a good chance uh, 
So go for it. Okay, as you rightly pointed out, Pierre, experience is crucial in Formula One. But you've sort of got a lot of experience also now under your belt, two full seasons. So hopefully you kick on from that lovely performance in in Brazil. As I said a short while back, this is also a sort of a, a familiar race track for your team as well. Uh, so wishing you the very best for the season. Hopefully this turns out to be that uh, breakout season that you've always desired. And hopefully we get a full season of racing so that fans like me who are still at home, still on lockdown, we shall get to enjoy uh, that sound of those engines, uh, you know, booming all across our houses from the TV starting from this weekend. Uh, I, I really hope so as well.